All right, 12.3, our last section in Chapter 12, is geometric sequences. And let's go ahead and throw on and series. So in 12.2, we did arithmetic. Now we'll do geometric. What's the difference? Instead of adding the same number every time for an arithmetic, now we multiply. Multiplying by the same constant to make new terms, if we keep multiplying by the same number, um, we call that a geometric sequence. We call that constant the common ratio, R. So let me show you an example here. Let's say we begin with 4, and then the second term is 36, 324, 2,916, 26,244, dot, dot, dot. Notice the numbers get big really fast. <laughs> what are we multiplying by each time? And well, it's easiest to see maybe in that first step and maybe the second step you kind of confirm it. Turns out it's 9. So we'd say here the common ratio is 9. We keep multiplying by 9 to get the next term. And yeah, that will make your series get big really quick. Okay, so let me show you the general term for a geometric sequence. Uh, here it is, a sub n, the nth term, equals a1, the first term, times r, and that is raised to the power of n minus 1. Notice a similarity to the arithmetic formula for the nth term. They both start with a1. But then instead of adding, now we're multiplying. Then they have their common part, right? Here was the common difference. Here it's the common ratio. And then you've got the n minus 1 piece. But here we multiplied by n minus 1. Where here we're putting it to the power. Now you, you may not notice this. And maybe you don't care. But I think it's, it's pretty cool. Um, plus becomes multiplication. Adding becomes multiply, and then multiplying becomes an exponent. So maybe you've you've seen this acronym for the order of operations. Really, multiplying and dividing are the same thing, just opposites. So they really are grouped together. Adding and subtracting are really the same thing, just opposites. So these should, one, there's really four levels. One, two, three, four. Okay. So what happened, right? Adding became multiplying. We jumped up one level. Adding became multiplying. Then multiplying became an exponent. And we jumped up like both parts moved up one degree, if you will, in the order of operations. Okay, I think that's really cool. What what would happen if we went to another degree? Oh. Okay, we won't go there. So let's look at this previous example with our new formula. Uh, a n times r to the n minus 1. So in this example, well, our a1 is 4, r is 9, so 4 times 9 raised to the n minus 1. And if you don't believe me that that's really the formula, we can, we can check a couple of terms really quickly. Hey, the first term, would that really give me 4? Well, if I plug in 1, then I've got 4 times 9 raised to the 1 minus 1. But that's 4 times 9 to the 0, and anything raised to the 0 is 1, so 4 times 1 really does get me the 4. How about the second term? Well, now I'm raising to the 2 minus 1, which is 1, so 4 times 9 gives me the 36. So that first term, you know, I'm actually not multiplying by anything because it turns out to be a 0. The second term, though, now I multiply by the 9 once. And kind of you get the idea. If we want to check the third term, now I'd be multiplying by 9 two times. 
So I would end up with 324. All right, you get it. What are some examples we might see? Let's take a look. Um, so some examples are going to be real straightforward. Doesn't hurt talking about them, though. Uh, find the eighth term where A1 equals 224 and R equals negative one-fourth. Find the eighth term. couple things. For one, you notice we can have fractions for R, right? We don't just need whole numbers. And if you multiply by a fraction like this, actually the, the terms get smaller. Also, R could be negative. Why not? You can have negative R's. You can have negative D, right? Common difference can be negative. R can be negative. Hmm, all right, the eighth term. Well, I know A1. I know R. Why don't I just go ahead and write... Cover that up. Why don't I go ahead and write the nth term? A1 times R... And you notice, because it's negative, I guess two reasons, negative and because it's a fraction, I put parentheses there, raised to the n minus 1. Okay, so then if I want to find the eighth term, then let's plug in 8. And while I go ahead and do the 8 minus 1, I'll put this into my calculator. Be careful with your parentheses. you got to have parentheses around this negative one-fourth. You should get... Uh, I converted my answer in my calculator to a fraction because it was uh, definitely a decimal I did not recognize. Uh, it turns out it's negative 7 over 512. So use that fraction to decimal feature, right? The double arrow. Sometimes there's an F double arrow D. Like that. We talked about it back in class. Okay, there's the eighth term. Very nice, very nice. Of course, we can make these a little bit harder. Let's do that with this one in a geometric sequence. A3 equals 75. And A7 equals 46,875. Find A10, the tenth term. Okay, I really like these questions because it's really like a puzzle. You know, you're given a couple of pieces, two pieces of the puzzle, and with that you can figure out any term uh, if you know it's a geometric sequence. So there's lots of different paths to figure out that number. Some are uh, shorter than others. Hey, however you do it, doesn't matter to me, so long as you get the answer. Um, obviously, you know, you got to have all your work there, and, and it's got to be true. But there are many true paths uh, to win to get the value of A10. Okay, here's how I would do it. I think this is the most intuitive, makes the most sense to me. I know A3, I know A7, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put this big list. Let me get rid of this for now. I'll fill that in later. So I'm going to start with A1. Well, I don't know what that is. And I'm just going to list them out, filling in the two that I know, and I'll just stop at A7. So I got A3 is 75, A7 46,875, and then I got all these blank spots in between. Now, if I really wanted to, I might painstakingly guess what I'm multiplying by to get from A3 to A7. But I think here there's a better way. I do want to realize how many steps are there to get there. Okay, so there's one step, two steps, three steps, four steps from A3 to A7. Makes sense. And each time, if this is a geometric, I'm multiplying by R times R times R times R times R. Right? So I multiplied by R four times to get from there to there. I can make an equation out of this. I started at 75, 
if I multiply by r four times, so that's r to the fourth, I'll end up with this. 75 times r to the fourth equals 46,875. And I can very quickly figure out what r is. So let's see. Well, if I divide by 75, r to the fourth equals 625. Then I can take a fourth root. And uh, actually, pretty nice, clean result there. Um, r just equals 5. I was multiplying by 5 every time. And if I wanted to go back, you know, with that information and check, then I could say, okay, let's just be sure. So 75 times 5, 375. 375 there. If I multiply by 5 again, 1,875 times 5 again, right, 9,375. And if I multiply by 5 one more time, I should have 46,875, and I do. That's great. Cool. Much easier than guessing. Set up an equation. Okay, well, we need more information than that. We need the R, but we also need to know A1. So what can we do? I'm going to hide this part of the paper and just start sliding this down. Um, here's what I set up. So really, I, I, I could work back on that first list just the way I've got it displayed on my paper. I just went ahead and wrote these again. A1, I don't know. A2, I don't know. A3, I know is 75. So let me think about working backwards. Well, if I work backwards, then I should divide by 5. So starting from 75, if I divide by 5 once, that's 25. And if I divide by 5 again, oh, sorry, that's not 25. <laughs> divide by 5, it's 15, my mistake. And if I divide by 5 again, I get 3. So I guess I, I could think, you know, back on this list up here, just keep going backwards, 15, 3, and I've got the full, the full list. Perfect. I know my A1. I know R. Let's finish this off. So I'm now taking it right over here. Uh, 3 times 5 raised to the n minus 1. I wanted to know A10. So I'll plug in 10. That means it's 3 times 5 to the 9th. Grab my calculator for that. It's a big number. 5,859,000. Eight hundred fifty nine thousand three hundred seventy five. And I got it. There's more than one way to do it. I'm just going to stick to this method. Um, you know, another way, I guess I can just describe this one verbally. Even back here, once we've got our list, if we want to know A10, well, can't we just multiply that by 5 another 3 times? You know, 46,875 times 5 times 5 times 5, make it to 810. We could do that, too. I kind of like using the formula. But, eh, you know, however you get to that answer, so long as it's a legitimate path. All right, we're going to stop this video here. Next, we're going to talk about the nth partial sum of a geometric series.